In my last video, I showed you how to set up Pi-hole on a Wi-Fi based internet connection. Recently, a commenter asked, what about doing it with a wired connection? That's a great question, GH. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Pi-hole on a wired internet connection. This video will show you how to do this on a Ubiquiti router. But even if you don't have a Ubiquiti router, a lot of the steps will be relatable and usable for whatever setup you have at home. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's what you need to set up and use Pi Hole on a wired Ethernet connection. A Raspberry Pi, I'm using a Model 3B+, Plus, but you can use any model you like. A power supply for your Raspberry Pi, a working router with one available Ethernet port, a micro SD card that's at least 16 gigabytes capacity, a micro SD card reader, Ethernet patch cable. I'm using Cat5e. Step one, reformat your micro SD card. Insert your micro SD card into your card reader, then insert it into your computer's USB slot. Now we need to download and install SD memory card formatter, which you can find in sdcard.org's download section. This is a great free program that's made by the official SD card association and has consistently given me the best results when reformatting SD cards. Download the appropriate application for your operating system, which will either be Windows or Mac. Open up the downloaded application and install it. Select your micro SD card's drive letter in the Select Card drop-down menu, then select Quick Format as the formatting option. Change the volume label to Pi Hole, then click Format. You'll get this warning notification about all the data getting erased. Click Yes. Once that process is complete, your micro SD card will be empty. We're done with the SD memory card formatter, so you can close it out. Step 2. Install the Raspberry Pi operating system imager onto your newly formatted micro SD card. Visit raspberrypi.org and download the Raspberry Pi OS Imager program. I'm on Windows 10, so that's the version that I'll be downloading. There's also one for Mac and Ubuntu. Install the Raspberry Pi OS Imager that you just downloaded. Then open it once it's done installing. Click the Choose OS button, click Raspberry Pi OS Other, then select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit version. Choose the micro SD card that we just reformatted. Then click Write. Click yes when you get this warning about erasing all the data. It takes a few minutes to write the Raspberry Pi OS to your micro SD card, so let's fast forward. Click continue when you get this write successful confirmation. If you get an error at this step, run the SD card formatter on the micro SD card all over again, then relaunch the Raspberry Pi OS imager program. I've had this happen once before and sometimes all you need to do is start over. And when your write is successful, just close out the imager program. And proceed to step three, safely eject your micro SD card from your computer. Remove it from the USB slot, then reinsert it. You might receive this prompt from Windows telling you to reformat the micro SD card. Don't do that. You'll lose everything. Instead, open up the micro SD card in Explorer. This is what your directory should look like. These are the Raspberry Pi OS installation files. Everything looks good. Step four, enable UART. This is also known as the asynchronous serial communication protocol. This will allow us to connect a USB device like a keyboard to a Raspberry Pi if we ever need to troubleshoot an issue. Open up the file called config.txt. Scroll down to the very bottom of this text file and add the following text. Number sign, enable UART. Next line, enable underscore UART equals one. Save the config.txt file, then close the config file. Step five, enable SSH. SSH stands for Secure Shell. It'll allow us to safely log into our Raspberry Pi remotely. To enable SSH, open up the Raspberry Pi's root directory. Right click, then create a new text file called SSH. No file extension needed. Then hit enter. Click yes when you get this warning about changing a file name extension. So now you should have a new file in your directory called SSH. Step six. Safely eject the micro SD card from your computer. Then insert the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi's micro SD slot. Step seven, boot up your Raspberry Pi. Connect your power plug to the Raspberry Pi's micro USB port. Then plug it into a power source. Also plug in your ethernet patch cable with one end plugging into your router's available port and the other into your Raspberry Pi's ethernet port. The Pi's LED will turn on and start flickering, which means it's doing its first time boot up. This process takes about 10 minutes if you have an older Pi model. Optional but recommended tip. An external HDMI monitor will be helpful if you have one because you can plug it in and use it to see exactly when the Raspberry Pi's boot up process is done. If you don't have a monitor, you'll just have to play the waiting game and just wait 10 minutes for the LED light to stop flickering. 
While we wait for that to happen, let's go to Step 8. Install Bonjour Print Services for Windows. Bonjour will allow us to change the Raspberry Pi's host name, which makes it easier to identify on our network. You only need to install Bonjour if you're on Windows because Macs have Bonjour pre-installed, but Windows users need to download and install it separately. Bonjour can be downloaded from Apple's support page, and I'll include a link below. Download the installation file, open it, and complete the installation. Click the Finish button once the install is complete. Step 9. Find your Raspberry Pi's IP address. We'll need this IP address so we can log into Raspberry Pi remotely through Secure Shell. Open up your Edge Router's admin panel. Navigate to the Services section near the top. Click the Actions drop-down menu on the right-hand side. Click View Leases. This is where you can view the IP addresses that have been assigned to all the devices on your internet network. Scroll down to find the Raspberry Pi. And there is our Raspberry Pi's IP address. Take a note of this IP address because we will need it for the next step. If for some reason the above method doesn't work for obtaining your Pi's IP address, you can also do it through the command line interface, or CLI if you prefer the hacker lingo. Click CLI at the top right. Log in with your router admin username and password. Then type show space DHCP space leases. Then hit enter. If you see this colon symbol, it means that there are more hidden lines beneath. Tap enter to scroll to the next line until you find your Raspberry Pi's IP address. Step 10. SSH into your Raspberry Pi. If you are a Windows user, you need to download and install a free application called Putty from putty.org. And of course, I'll add a link for that in the video description. Open the download, click next, finish the installation, then open up the Putty program. In the hostname field, type in the IP address for your Raspberry Pi that we noted in the previous step. Port number should be 22. Connection type, SSH, then click Open. You'll get this PuTTY security alert. Click Yes to proceed. If you're on a Mac, you don't need to download PuTTY. Mac users just need to go to their Utilities folder, open up the app called Terminal, and punch in the following command, SSH, space, the IP number of your Raspberry Pi device, space, dash L, space, PI, then hit Enter. I don't have a screen recording of those steps on a Mac since I'm a Windows user, so here's a picture of a cute cat. And you should now see this, the Raspberry Pi login screen. Step 11. Log in to Raspberry Pi using the default credentials. Login name, Pi, password, Raspberry. Then hit enter, and you're in. Step 12. Change your Raspberry Pi's host name. We need to do this because if you go into your DHCP server leases, you'll notice that the default host name for your Raspberry Pi is Raspberry Pi. This can get confusing if you have multiple Pi's connected to your network. So we're gonna change that to something more specific. Run this command. sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash hostname, then hit enter. Delete Raspberry Pi, then type in piehole. Control X to exit, then hit Y for yes to save our edit. At the bottom, it will ask you to confirm the file to overwrite. Hit enter to confirm. Step 13. Change the host name in the host file. Run this command, sudo space nano space forward slash etc forward slash hosts. Use your keyboard arrow keys to move down to the next line. Then use your arrow key to bring your cursor to the first letter in Raspberry Pi. Delete it, then key in piehole. Control X to exit, press Y on your keyboard to confirm, then enter to confirm the file overwrite. Reboot your router. Now, if you go back to your DHCP leases in the Edge Router Admin panel, you notice that the Raspberry Pi hostname has changed to Pihole. If it hasn't, you probably just have to reboot your Raspberry Pi. Speaking of which, reboot the Raspberry Pi. Do it through this short command, sudo space reboot, then press enter. If you're using PuTTY, you'll get this error about a closed network connection. This is normal, since we just severed the connection by restarting the Raspberry Pi. Click OK and exit PuTTY. Your Raspberry Pi's LED light will turn off, then turn back on and start flickering. When your light is solid, the reboot process is complete. Step 15, SSH back into your Raspberry Pi. If you're a Windows user, open up PuTTY again. If you're on Mac, open up Terminal. You have two options for getting back to the Raspberry Pi login screen. One is to retype in the Pi's IP address like we did before, or you can type in the host name that we just assigned, which is Pihole, then click open. You'll get the security breach warning again. Click yes to continue. Type in the default login credentials. Login pi, 
Password? Raspberry. Then hit enter. Step 16. Change the default password. Because the defaults of Pi and Raspberry are very unsafe and not secure. Type in P-A-S-S-W-D. Then hit enter. Retype the current password, which is raspberry in lowercase. Hit enter. Now type in a new complex password and take a note of this new password and record it someplace safe. Hit enter once you've done that. Reconfirm your new password, then hit enter again. Step 17. Install Pihole. This is really easy and is done through a single line command. Curl space dash S big S big L space HTTPS colon forward slash slash install dot pihole dot net space vertical bar space bash then hit enter the pi hole installation process will now begin your raspberry pi's led will flicker which is totally normal sometimes the installation looks like it's frozen but i promise you it's not just wait and let the installation run it can take up to 10 minutes to complete depending on your internet connection and also depending on which raspberry pi device you're using this is the installer welcome screen hit enter to continue You'll also see this free and open source screen. Hit enter again, then enter at the static IP notice. Step 18, configure your Pi hole. Select Google as your upstream DNS provider by highlighting it with the arrow keys, then pressing enter. Next screen will confirm the use of the Steven Black host list for blocking ads. This one's fine, so press enter. You only need IPv6 to be ticked if you have an IPv6 connection. And if you have IPv6, you'll know. Most of us just use IPv4. Press the down arrow on your keyboard to move to the lower line. Hit spacebar to remove the star from the IPv6 tick box. Then hit enter. Everything looks good on the static IP address confirmation screen as is. Hit enter to continue. Hit enter when you get this notice about IP conflict. Select on for the web admin interface. This is a really nice and useful web-based control panel for managing our Pi hole settings and also for viewing its ad blocking stats. I'd highly recommend installing it. So hit enter to continue. Yes, we do want to install the web server and required PHP modules since it's used by our web admin user interface. Select on for logging queries. Show everything for the privacy mode, then give your Raspberry Pi some more time to complete the Pi hole installation. Eventually, you'll see this installation complete screen. Record the web interface URL and the randomly generated password. Select OK by hitting Enter. Step 19. Visit the admin web page interface. Open up a web browser and visit this URL. Your Pi hole's IP number forward slash admin. Click login on the left side. Type in the generated password that we got in the previous step. Then click login. As you can see, the admin web page interface is working, but our Pi hole is not blocking ads yet. That's because we still need to set up our DNS server on our network before the Pi hole can start blocking ads. This is where I'm going to discuss the Ubiquiti Edge Router specific config for setting up Pi hole on a DNS server. If you don't have a Ubiquiti router, you will need to find your router's DNS settings. If you're having trouble, you can post a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Step 20, back up your Edge Router's configuration. This is just a precaution before we make changes to our router's configuration. So, log in to the Edge Router's admin interface. Click the System tab on the bottom. Scroll down to the Configuration Management and Device Maintenance section. Click Download Backup Config File. Save the file to a secure location on your computer. Step 21. Change the router's name servers. Scroll up to the Name Server section. In the System Name Server field, type in your Pi-Hole's IP address. Scroll to the bottom, then click Save. Step 22. Change your router's DNS. We're almost done. Exit the System menu. Click the Services tab at the top of the dashboard. Click the Actions drop-down menu. Select View Details. Change DNS1 to your Pi Hole's IP address, then click the Save button. Exit the DHCP server LAN window. Last and final step, reboot your router. Reopen the system tab on the bottom of the admin interface. Scroll down to the restart device section and click the restart button. Then reconfirm the restart. Your internet connection will go down temporarily while the edge router reboots. When your router is done rebooting, you might need to forget the Wi-Fi connection, then reconnect to it in order to get your computer and other devices back online. After a few minutes, your Pi hole should be blocking ads across your network. That's it. You're done. A word of warning. 
If your Raspberry Pi device is ever unplugged or malfunctions, your entire internet connection will go down. That's because your DNS is going through your Pi hole. So if your Pi hole goes down, you can't resolve DNS. That means no internet. There are two ways to avoid this. One is to plug your Pi hole into an uninterrupted power supply. I have all of my network devices plugged into a UPS. So that way, if my power ever goes out, my internet connection stays alive. The second way to avoid this is to use a two Pi hole device setup where one acts as a backup and kicks in if the first Pi device malfunctions, dies, or loses power. And that is how you set up Pi Hole on a Ubiquiti Edge router using a hardwired Ethernet setup. Personally, I prefer this hardwired setup over the Wi-Fi wireless one that I did the previous video on. Because as we know, Wi-Fi fades in and out, and if your Raspberry Pi can't connect to your Wi-Fi, your entire home's internet will go down. A hardwired Pi Hole prevents this. I sincerely hope that you found this video useful. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel because when you subscribe to my channel, I can make a lot more helpful video tutorials like this one. So that's it. Enjoy your Pi Hole. Bye.